In the last few days, Chris Heaton Harris offered Northern Ireland uh, an option for getting back on its feet with a bumper uh, offer of £3.3 billion as a package. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, in terms of packages, even Quasi Quateng would have looked sheepish. And uh, Chris Heaton Harris doesn't seem to have uh, worked his magic in this particular case because Sir Geoffrey Donaldson. Uh, the uh, the man who who controls the Democratic Unionist Party uh, is not going to play ball. I mean, he's he scented power all that time ago uh, when Theresa May asked for his help, and he doesn't seem able to have relaxed his grip on the choke chain of political uh, expedience. I mean, it's like it, it it it's like those horrible chains that. Um, uh, that sometimes dogs were walked on, and you sort of pull them back, and <coughs> um, and, uh, and 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 that really is what Chris Heaton Harris was experiencing on Tuesday when he said all the issues of substance have reached a conclusion after eight months of talk, and yet Donaldson still thinks there's more he can he can twist out, he can he can break the system. Uh, he's trying to trying to find legislation to fix the harm, he says, that Brexit is causing. And yet he was one of the people who wanted a hard Brexit, wasn't he? And so now there's a long pause over Christmas uh, while the turkey gets cold and Parliament returns from recess on, the, uh, on Christmas Day for the Armenians on January the 8th. And on January the 18th, uh, Chris Heaton Harris will have met the legal deadline uh, or the delay uh, to call for fresh regional elections and uh, it, it, a question about you know will will Donaldson want to be so sort of bounced into this situation uh, he's people think he really does want to get to Stormont um, but some of the more uh, aggressive members of his party are pushing on him to hold out. Well, the point is there's only 11 people in his party, aren't they? Or 12 with him. Um, and uh, uh, how, how many people are there in the executive? I don't know. I'm, uh, there's probably a lot more than there. But there's only, there's only 12 party officials. And... The DUP thinks that it's going to look tough by being by talking tough, and uh, it wants some. Um, I'm, I'm sure it wants money. the The Treasury is happy to write off money. The Treasury is happy to give money. Well, I mean, the, hap the Treasury seems to be happy to give anybody money at the moment. Uh, Michelle uh, Moan, and, um, and 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 anybody else. Uh, if they moan hard enough, they're going to get a package. And, uh, and, and um, some people are calling for a general strike from January the 18th uh, to force Chris Heaton Harris's hand. I know Chris Heaton Harris, and I don't think his hand will be forced. Uh, Chris, Chris, is, uh, Chris has got two interests outside Parliament. Number one is uh, lifting weights. So he's very good at patience. He understands patience. And number two is refereeing football matches. So he understands about parity and about fairness. I can't think of anybody else who is better placed to conduct negotiations. He also has a background in the European Parliament. So he understands Ireland as much as it is possible he has friends in Ireland. And I think that's one way in which he was able to find some sort of negotiation which led to uh, the Windsor Agreement. But, uh, and, and, you know, you have to say, well, you know, if Donaldson insists and insists, if there is a, a general strike as uh, Carmel Gates um, uh, has, uh, has, has promised... Uh, what is Chris Heaton Harris's second plan? I'm sure he's got one. I'm sure he's got a plan B because he would be foolish not to have one. 
and um, and he is a monumentally good negotiator, but he is up against a very stubborn group. I, I think the DUP is going to find, when it comes to a general election, that they will lose power and that the public would just say, well, you know, we'd, we'd prefer anybody other than you, even Sinn Féin. Um, if the DUP were to return, there's a possibility of a little bit of stability before the next Stormont election is due in 2027. But before that, there is a general election. And I think the DUP are going to lose heavily. Um, because they are, they are in the process of defying the 1998 Good Friday Agreement. And uh, the, the agreement may have given both the Sinn Féin and the DUP a veto over when and how Stormont operates. But the Good Friday Agreement also uh, gives a... Um, uh, give, is, it enshrines the hope that Stormont will govern Northern Ireland, that someone will be there. And it is simply being prevented by the intransigence of the DUP. Uh, the Alliance Party is looking for some sort of change of the rules so that this sort of nonsense can never happen again. And um, the, the, the Northern Ireland Affairs Committee is doing the same thing. It's it's looking for major reform. Um, if if necessary, thinking about who about the identity and the form of the first and deputy first ministers, um, so that so, so so that again, this sort of hiatus can never happen again. But I think the price Jeffrey Donaldson is going to pay is a period in the wilderness and possibly an exit from um, party politics for good. And I think he's going to take most of his party with him. I think, I, I, I think this is a, um, I think what he is, what, what he is conducting in his hard-nosed negotiations is political suicide.